We'll spend the bulk of our time together in class either fine-tuning the answers to a series of questions about a reading or presenting the derivation of some key result. I want to illustrate what I'm looking for in the latter by deriving the solution to the firm's profit maximization problem and showing how it changes with the structure of the market within which it operates. First, consider the main elements of a good presentation. Make sure we all know where you are going and why. This isn't a race. Ideally, your audience will be able to think about what you are doing at the same time we are all taking notes. Allow opportunities for us to ask questions. Define notation. Especially important if your handwriting is as bad as mine. You've thought a lot about what you are doing. Your classmates haven't necessarily done so. So what now seems obvious to you won't necessarily seem obvious to them. You're concentrating on your notes and on laying things out clearly on the board. Allow time to check in with the rest of us to make sure we are still with you. Help folks keep track of the main intermediate steps and how they relate to the overall purpose of the derivation. Summarize the main takeaways from what you have accomplished. To illustrate what I have in mind, I'd like to take you back to some of what you studied in intermediate microeconomics. The field of industrial organization is a subset of micro. My goal is to demonstrate important differences in the solution to the firm's profit maximization problem depending on the structure of the market in which the firm is operating. We'll compare the solution for perfect competition, monopoly, and oligopoly, that is, rivalry among the few. Assume, as we often did, that the firm's strategic variable is quantity. So a firm's profits are a function of its choice of output. With price determined by plugging total industry output into the demand function. Then the profit is the difference between revenue price times quantity, and total costs. It will be useful to divide total industry output into the sum of the firm's output, little q, and the output of everybody else, that is, total output excluding the output of firm 1. Since this is a maximization problem, it makes sense to use the calculus to solve it. We take the first derivative of profits, pi prime, using the product rule on the first term. The derivative of q with respect to q is 1, leaving p. Then we need to use the chain rule to define the derivative of p with respect to q. So dp d capital Q times d capital Q with respect to little q multiplied by q. Of course, the derivative of the second term is just c prime. The q that maximizes profits sets the first derivative equal to zero. I'm going to assume that the second order condition for a maximum is met. Note that the first two terms define marginal revenue and the last marginal cost, so the first order condition for profit maximization requires the firm to operate where marginal, raw, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. A competitive firm has no control has no control over price because changes in its own output have no discernible impact on total industry sales. That is, dq d little q is equal to zero, which implies that price is equal to marginal cost, which 
is equal to average cost because of the free entry and exit assumption of competitive markets. Profit maximization in a competitive market yields zero profits. Now let's consider the case of monopoly. Here, firm output is equal to industry output so that dq d little q is equal to 1 and there is a wedge between price and marginal cost equal to the negative of the middle term. If I divide both sides by P, I get the result that the price cost margin is equal to what should be a familiar right hand side term. Recall that the elasticity of demand is equal to dq dp times p over q so that the right hand side term is just the inverse, the negative of the inverse of the elasticity of demand. The more inelastic demand, the larger the gap between price and marginal cost. Hence, the larger the deadweight loss, the larger the allocative inefficiency. Finally, let's consider the case of oligopoly. The key characteristic of oligopoly is strategic interdependence. The payoff from my strategic choice depends on the response of my rivals. So the impact of a change in my output on total industry output is given by dq d little q is equal to 1, the direct effect, and the derivative of of dq minus 1 over dq, the net response of my rivals. I want to see how this strategic response alters the price cost margin we derived for the monopoly case. Now the wedge between price and marginal cost is equal to the slope of the demand curve, the negative of the slope of the demand curve times times the response of industry output to the firm's strategic choice times the firm's output. I can divide both sides by P to get the price cost margin. I want the term before the parentheses to be the inverse elasticity of demand, which it will be if I put big Q in the numerator. Of course, multiplying by Q requires me to divide by Q to maintain the equation. The last term, little Q over big Q, is firm one's market share. Hence, the price cost margin for a firm maximizing profits in an oligopoly depends on the inverse of the elasticity of demand. It's market share and the response of rivals to the firm's output choice. If the firm believes that the response is zero, the assumption of the Carnot model, then dq minus 1 dq equals zero, and the price cost margin is just equal to the negative of the inverse demand times the market share. If firms in this industry are able to cooperate, either explicitly by forming a cartel or through tacit collusion so that the so that the market share times 1 plus dq d little q is equal to 1 then we have the monopoly result 
that is, joint profit maximization. If the rival response always just offsets the firm's shift in output so that dq minus 1, dq is equal to negative 1, then the price cost margin will be equal to 0 and P equals MC, we mimic the competitive result. We mimic perfect competition. The conclusion then is that under oligopoly any market outcome is possible depending crucially on the nature of rivalry in that industry. The focus of the field of industrial organization is on understanding the nature of that rivalry and discerning how public policy can steer the market towards outcomes that better approximate the competitive, that is, economically efficient solution.